God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but God. The Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bare witness of him, cried, This was he of whom I sprang. He that cometh after me is before, before me. He was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, the grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. The only way you can get to God, the only way you can see God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ that was born in a manger. The Lord Jesus Christ that the prophets and the law spoke about, the coming Messiah, the prophet that would be likened unto Moses, was born in a city called Bethlehem. And we are in a time of year that we don't even think about God and Jesus Christ. Yet, but this time is supposed to be that time that we think about Jesus Christ. There was great Christian Americanism yesterday in all the stores of America fighting for television sets. This country gives one day by George Washington to thank God of heaven, and yet, how many of you gave God the time in prayer and thanksgiving? How many of you thank God this morning that you're able to get up and drive and go get fruits and vegetables? And yet the Bible says that God loves you, and God is long-suffering. And God is not willing that any should perish, and that the fact is, He has given His Word. He has given men mouths to speak the Word, and He has given us the testimony of Jesus Christ. And when I open in the Gospel of John chapter 1, I have reached Jesus Christ from Bethlehem to about 30 years old. You forget that that baby grew up. That little tiny baby held in Mary's arms grew up. And that baby went about in a place called Israel and preached and taught God and lived a sinless life. And that baby was born to die for our sins. And that baby was rejected as a man. That child that grew up to be the Savior was lied about, was mocked, was bruised, and suffered and died that we may have life. Why is there a Bible? Why is there Jesus Christ? Why are you why are you every single week bothering our business with this Jesus in Bible? Why don't you just shut up and go home? What do you want? Jewels, we want music, we want entertainment. And those things you will not get in hell. That's why there's a Bible, that's why there's a Jesus, because God knows the one that created hell for the devil and his angels knows because you're a sinner, you will go there upon your death 
Jesus Christ. And there are testimonies that you could bring people into the court of law, and one of them was John the Baptist. We read today, I've read to you in the Bible, a witness of John the Baptist, who will stand before the court with the Bible and say, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There are more than 12 named apostles of Jesus Christ that would testify him in a court, and one of them was of Satan. The Bible says in the book of James, even the devils tremble at Jesus Christ. Even the devils in his ministry on this world trembled and repented and confessed Jesus Christ. And you human beings will not. And without Jesus Christ, you'll join those devils in a burning lake of fire that burns forever with no relief. You see, what we've seen in John chapter 1, he came unto his own. Your Savior, number one, has to be Jewish. A black Jesus will not work. God's Son proclaimed among all the people in the world has to be Jewish. He has to come of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So your Savior has to be of the Jewish nation to be saved. Number two, your Savior needs to be a man, son of God. Now, I know today Americans have trouble with distinguishing among the sexes. They can't tell a male from a female because you're stupid. You're ignorant. But a son is a male. So you've got to have a Jewish male. That rules out Mary. Mary is not a male. She can't save you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that love of God is in a Jewish male sent by God, who is God, that you may have eternal life. According to John chapter 1. Again, it all comes out of the book. There is an entire population, the Bible speaks of multitudes, that has given to the fact of the life, the death, the burial, and resurrection of one man, Jesus Christ. Jesus, was, Jesus died and was buried and put in the tomb and is seated at the right hand of the Father today. You put other men in the tomb, you put them in the grave, they're still in the grave. Muhammad, Buddha are still in the grave. That's religion. Joseph Smith, Mary Baker Eddy has never rang her phone from the tomb. That's a religion. Religion is man-made death, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. We also read, But as many as received Him, Jesus Christ, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Another thing that happens when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you are taken out of hell and put into glory, you become a child of God. And that's only by the death, the resurrection, the belief of your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. 
I stand here as a saved, born-again, Bible-believing Christian, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and yet I am a child of God, and you can be one too, if you're not already by Jesus Christ. Now, of all the people in the world, I don't know who would you like to be a child of, but all those people in the world cannot match to be a child of God. God, creator of all things, seen and unseen, that is the thing that you, that is the one to be your father forever, for eternity. The one that created, the one that has all that is to be today, is the proper one to be your father. And yet the Bible says in John 8, 44, that these people over here have Satan as their father because they're liars. They're scorners. They're fools, according to the Bible, Proverbs chapter 1. But power to be... Sons of God through Jesus Christ. You can't get that power anywhere else. The one that said, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Salvation is that you have to be a child of God by Jesus Christ. That's the only way. You're not His child. You're not saved. And that comes by repentance, by belief of your heart on Jesus Christ to wash away your sins and cleanse you. Religion will not get you into the family of God. No greater power there is than the power of God. That power of Jesus Christ got victory over death and hell. He proclaimed the keys of death and hell upon His resurrection. And we're all going to die. The wages of sin is death. So what are we going to do with the power of death? Get the one that has the power and proclaim the power over death and hell. The Lord Jesus Christ. Don't run to someone who's still dead and buried. They ain't got no power. And as Martha says, four days he stinketh. And yet our Lord Jesus Christ does not stink. He is not corrupted. He has not decomposed. He is alive and well at the right hand of the Father, waiting for you to call upon Him to be saved. That power to be a child of God, that power to come out of hell and be saved, rests upon Jesus Christ. A male, a Jew, the Son of God Himself. Muhammad can't do it. Mary can't do it. Only Jesus Christ saves. And Jesus Christ alone. That's it. If I were to come to you one by one and ask you, what is your way to heaven? If you got anything but Jesus Christ, you're not going. You can't go. Not proclaimed by me, but proclaimed by God. Don't come to God by your works. Jesus Christ had the greatest works. Jesus said, I fulfilled everything that the Father has sent me to do. You haven't. I haven't. No man can but the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the man, Pilate said, after declaring Jesus Christ innocent of everything four times. We had the power to become the Son of God to them that believe on His name. Believe
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I didn't say, come over here, give us money. Because that's not going to do it. Money cannot buy your way into, into heaven. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and the finished work that He has done for you. Your works can't save you because Jesus has already fulfilled the works of God. It's based upon the merit of Jesus Christ, not you. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is the only means of salvation. There's no other way. There is no other way to get to God but by Jesus. And God has set it up to be one way. Satan has set it up to be any way you want but Jesus. Satan's got America so confused and I don't even have any idea what God is, what God wants. God bless America, which one? Which God? Have you checked the yellow pages and under churches to see how many gods there are? That's not God's way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. One man, not a whole bunch of nonsense. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ alone. Which were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of God, nor the will of man, but God. We don't want Jesus Christ. We never did want Jesus Christ. And we don't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. We rather rest assured that what we can do can get us into heaven. What I can pay can get me into heaven. God says, no, nope, i got to send my son. You think whatever you want to think, but that power rests in my son and not what you can do. The same plain fact is, if we can save ourselves, there would be no Jesus Christ. If I could save myself, I wouldn't need him if I could save myself. If I could do something to please God with my sins, the 33 and a half years of Jesus Christ was wasted if I could do it myself. And yet the 33 and a half years of God being on this planet and dying on the cross and being buried and rising from the grave shows I can't do nothing because God had to do it for me. And when we tell God, my cash, my works, my religion, I don't believe in anything. We spit in the face of God saying, that's more better than what you've done, Jesus. You should got a piece of yesterday, pumpkin or apple. That's a great piece. And yet God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. And when God's love has come out, when God's love has been shown, it is found to be in the Son of God, a male, that had to be of the Jewish race that we are to believe on to become children of God Himself. By believing on His name, we get the power. Where's peace, Prince Pete? This guy has no peace because he's never been to God. He's never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is no peace. The Bible says there's no peace unto the wicked, saith the Lord. So if you want peace, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall get that peace, which is of the fruit of the Spirit, with love, joy, long-suffering. Come to Jesus, and you'll get that peace. 
And you won't be a moron saying, where's peace, where's peace? It's right here in Jesus Christ. God sent His Son because you can't do. You can't do it yourself. And Jesus Christ coming in the flesh proves it. And the Bible says believe. The Bible says there's power and the ability to get the, the title to be a child of God rests upon the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, what else we have? And the Word was made flesh. This Word, the Holy Word of God, is the incarnate Word of Jesus Christ. This Bible, it's all about Jesus Christ. Who Jesus Christ is, what He is, how He is, which He is, how is written in the Scriptures that prophecy has been fulfilled about His first advent, and there are yet more prophecies about His second coming, and all the prophecies have been fulfilled in His first coming, you rest assured that all the prophecies will be on His second coming, and that one of the prophecies says, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be cast in the lake of fire, just as much as Judas has been proclaimed in the Scriptures to sell Jesus Christ out for 30 pieces of silver. As much as the Bible tells us that Jesus will be of the seed of David, and He is, the Bible proclaims that Jesus is coming, and He will, just as sure as His first coming. The 48 prophecies of His first coming are 100% sure, and the Bible speaks more about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word... It's not a program. It's not game. It is what God has said, proclaimed in His Word. And rest assured, if your salvation is not found in the King James 1611 Bible, you do not have a salvation. Don't step up to me and say, well, my missile... God didn't write a missile. My magazine, God did not write a magazine. He wrote a Bible, the book. My tradition, God did not write tradition. He wrote the Bible. And Jesus Christ lived the Word of God 100% foolish. 100% that Jesus Christ lived the Word of God. So rest assured that salvation is found in what the book I'm holding, the book that I preach and which I quote from, is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word was made flesh. You're like clockwork, Prince Peace, every damn Saturday, Prince Peace. And was made flesh. Jesus Christ was human. Every Saturday, I got to hear the loud That word became flesh again, as I said, in Bethlehem. Born of Mary. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ is the word of God that came in the flesh. 100% man, 100% God, without sin. This guy is over here. This word became alive. And how do you know this word's alive? Because you don't want to hear it. If I were to put this down on the airplane seat, it would be the last seat people would choose to sit down. 
If I were to come to your door with this Bible, you would not open this, your door because of this book. This book has had saints' blood shed. This book has had God's blood shed. This book has changed the destination of men from hell to heaven by believing upon the word, the Lord Jesus Christ. This book can change your life by believing what it says. And it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Where is this peace? Every Saturday, we don't have peace around here. Well, sir, I've got the peace. Sir, i got the peace. You don't because you will not believe on Jesus. Come over here. Hey, come over here. I'll show you the peace. Come over here. Come over here. I'll show you peace. You want peace? I will show you in the Bible. Come on. Come on. I'll show you. So you don't want it. Every Saturday, you're like Popper. I ain't Jesus. I am no way Jesus. And dwell among us. As I've already said, Jesus had multitudes of people who gave fact to what he has done, what he has lived, has been authenticated by God through the will of God that they could stand in a courtroom and say, I testify that Jesus is real and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He said, when will that courtroom be? At the great white throne judgment. Not everybody sees it, Jesus, Prince of Peace. I know you don't, but they will stand at the great white throne judgment as God casts this fool in the lake of fire to say, hey, I sent your Prince of Peace to preach the word. You will not believe. You're a fool. Be, be dark from me, and you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Over, over 400 people at least have seen the resurrected Jesus Christ. Twelve men lived with Jesus, a minimum, of his entire life, and could testify. Women. Women lived and, and did things for Jesus Christ, and we don't even know the number. Multitudes. Nine thousand men. Nine thousand men, a minimum, men only counting were fed by Jesus Christ and can testify that He is God. Well, thank you for the testimony. Maybe they don't want to hear your mouth. You think I care? I just told the Bible says, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. When they saw Jesus, they saw the Father. When they lived with Jesus, they saw the Father. When Jesus lived, He was in sinless. Hey, idiot, they're looking at you as the idiot. Oh, where's that Jesus talking? Yes. Oh, eight feet sweet love is Jesus. Because you're full of love. Jesus calling me an idiot. Come on. All right. Sure. What kind of vocabulary you got? Jesus. Okay. Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she utters her voice, saying, How long ye simple ones will love simplicity, and the scorners delight in scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Proverbs 1.22, you fool. I already told you where the piece is. I told you, come over here and I'll show you. Come here. Hey, come over here. I'll show you where the piece is. You know that, He's a nuisance. I know. But, sir, I'm offering you the peace. I am offering you the peace. You won't come over here.
here. You won't come over here. Every Saturday you drive me crazy, Francis. You won't come over here, sir. You come over here, I'll show you the piece. Yeah, here's the piece right here, sir. Here's the piece. Sir, here's the piece. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That comes from the Holy Spirit. Peace, sir. You get the peace of God through the Bible. Right here, sir, I'm telling you. This is the farmer's market. Yeah, okay, no, I'm, out of there. I'm just showing you the piece. Yep. Over there. Yep. Sidewalk is public property. We've been no. told. We've been told we can go on the sidewalk. No. Not to me. He ran away when I showed him the piece. You're allowed on the sidewalk. Officer. Hey. Officer, are we allowed on this sidewalk here? Officer, are we allowed on this sidewalk here? Just asking a question. Are we allowed? I'm going to go find out. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I'm gonna go find out. Yeah, we're allowed on you. We've already been told by an officer. We're allowed on that side. We're not, we're just not allowed in that part. Right. Not beyond those. Now, this is, now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see that this guy was looking for peace. And he ran from it. And I showed him Galatians, the peace of God, and he ran from it. You may think I was angry. You may think that, you know, I got, no, I was, the guy was asking for peace, and I showed him the peace, and he was heckling, ran off as a fool. And there he is over there. He don't want the peace. I showed him from the Word of God where the peace is, and notice how he's shut up now. The Word of God has shut that fool up. Praise God! That the Word of God is alive and shuts fools up. And when he doesn't realize that these are being videotaped, that people will see him as a fool. And he'll have to stand before God one day, as one guy over here says, Well, don't come over here. Well, that's the living Bible. I don't mean the living Bible. That's the King James Bible that's living. I'm afraid of it. Because you don't want the Word of God. And the Bible says you don't. The Word of God is living. John chapter 1. Let me go back there. He's allowed to walk on the sidewalk and heckle us, but we can't bring the Word of God on that sidewalk. Well, cop said he's gonna check, but yeah, well, I don't go over there. Back, you should arrest that guy for standing on that uh -huh. sidewalk yelling too. So, the, wait a minute, hold on, I'm wind blowing. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word's right here. I brought the word to a person who was asking about the word a question, and he ran away. Friends, this Bible is living. This Bible is true. This Bible will condemn you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And you will not be offended at this word. You'll stand in this word and say, wow, hallelujah, that man is right. But I guarantee what you witness here, i, I got to speak up for a minute. What you witness here has been happening week after week after week, but that guy will not come back again because he knows I got the truth. I had to do that. Come on right now, I will tell off this microphone, I'll speak to you from the Bible what you need to be. But realize what we do and Jesus did, Paul did, James, John, Peter, all preached on the street. It's called a street ministry. But you've been brought up in Americanism, oh, don't yell at me, don't call me names, because America is a sissy, spineless jellyfish, and the Bible is completely opposite. Read what Jesus said to the Pharisees in the tone that he read it to them. When Paul was smacked before the council, man, he fired right back up. Now, it's not right. But the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. You don't know if you got tomorrow. And this word that is Jesus Christ, if this word is correct, if this word is correct, 
Will you, will you with me just assume for a moment? Will you assume with me just for a moment that what if the Bible is correct? If God and what He says is right, there is a hell. Do you really want to go? Would you really like to have that as your destination? And yet God says in Isaiah 1.18, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God says, come on, let us reason together. And that's what we're doing here every week with the Bible. We're trying to get you to see Jesus Christ. We're trying to get you to come to Him. And if you want a low tone, I will turn this off. If you've got true questions about the Bible and Jesus Christ, I will sit down with you with an open Bible and tell you what God expects from you. But you say, what about that yelling and screaming yelling? That's preaching. Just because your preacher don't do it. Well, we're supposed to be in church. You know why we're here? Because you won't be in church. They don't even have funerals and weddings in churches no more. So you've got, we've got to go to the masses for you to hear the gospel because you ain't going to come to God. That's why... No love of God. You realize the love of God is we're telling you what God expects from you? We're telling you what God has told you. We're telling you what God has a message for you, and that's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. We're telling you that religion can't do it. We're telling you you can't do it. And that's not me saying it. That's the Bible. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The fact is that you're a sinner. The Bible also says the wages of sin is death. You're going to die. What then? And if you will reason with me to think that if the Bible is correct, if you will just come to that conclusion just for a moment, if you come to that conclusion with me just for a moment, that if the Bible's correct, without Jesus Christ, you'll burn in hell for all eternity. Are you willing to take that risk, or are you willing to say, let, let me try it? Come now, let us reason together. And the Bible's going to win. The Bible will be proclaimed. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. We have outdone the bongo man. We've outdone the peace man. And the Bible proclaims that we're still here with the Bible. And we're still preaching the same message that's been preached for 2,000 years that Jesus saved and has not been changed. And I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care how you feel. It is what God said to do. And Peter and John told the, the, the council, we will mind what God tells us to do, never mind what man has to do. Well, that's kind of cold. So is this world. So is Satan. Satan will have the authenticity for you to continue in his way and be deceived and be damned for eternity because He wants you to burn with Him in eternity. Now, that's the God of this world. That's the God of this world. He wants you to be damned with Him. And Jesus and God reaches out and says, I want you to be saved. God made hell for Satan and his angels, and he died on that cross and came up from the grave that you might not go.
the love of God is John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, when I say that to you with a loud voice, that does so much better going to a stupid ball game and holding a sign that says John 3.16, which no one's going to read and look it up. And if you got the wrong Bible, it will pervert that verse. So, here I am at a ball game, people. Right here, ball game, ball field. I'm going to proclaim John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the Word of God. That's the love of God. And when Jesus preached to multitudes, I guarantee he had a loud voice. Paul, you can go over to Athens today, the amphitheater, and it's in it's, uh, Ephesus. You can go to that, that amphitheater in Ephesus and see how glorious it's broken down, how big that place is, and the voice of Paul carried through all the people. I don't think he preached. Believe in Jesus and thou shalt be saved. I guarantee he had a loud voice. Just you Americans ain't sucker enough to, to, to be yelled at and screamed at and punished. I got all liberty, but I got no responsibility. And God's giving you liberty, believe or don't believe. But, well, let me read to you something out of Romans chapter 10 before I make my next statement. And you may not believe it, but I don't care. I'm faithful. I'm standing in the righteousness of God, doing what God's told me to do. I'm a sinner. I do wrong. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Oh, I should have read that to that guy. I can remember that. That preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Mark 16 says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And God says, according to His Word, that loud mouth guy that's obnoxious to you, I love His feet. I love His message because it's about my Son. And the Bible says in Luke, if one of you were to come out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, all the angels in heaven would rejoice. It's glory to God in the highest. And I don't expect you to like this. I expect you to rant and way, way, uh, rave. I expect you to hate this message because that's what the Bible says you would do. You are only living the Bible by your rebellion. Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. That's that loving Jesus. He said, you know what, they're going to hate you, but marvel not. And yet we still preach the same message, Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. The blood of Jesus Christ, Acts 20, 28, the blood of God cleanses us all from, from sin. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And as I read in Proverbs 1, that scorner. And he's wrong because I have not been here every Saturday, sorry to say. There have been Saturdays we were unable to come. But he told you my message is about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So 
So being here and preaching that message is you guys are hearing it, you guys are getting it, you're responding. Not the way God wants you to do. There's power in the Word, and you saw it this morning. It chased off the devils. It got a vendor upset because we're on a sidewalk. But if I had beer here, you all come and enjoy it. You would pick up my table and move it in with you guys. And you know it. Why is it you want booze instead of a savior? Because you're a sinner. But one day you're going to appreciate and it'll be too late what we do. And I, you ask my wife, I talk about this often, which you don't realize what's going to happen. And it'll be too late. Unless you turn today and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You know, the rapture will happen right now and his church is gone. We'll be gone. You all will plead. You all will have a celebration. You would all be happy like they did when Jesus died. And yet, you'll see me again. You will see these signs and these gospel tracts again. But you know what's most important? I have deviated from my message, so I'm just... You know what's most important? You will see the Jesus we preach. Unless you get right with God, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus that we preach will turn to you and say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You can have that same Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come on, enter our end. You can get it well done or you can get depart from me. Which one do you want God to say to you? What is so hard about the message of God? I'm not asking for your money. I'm not asking you to give yourselves to me. I'm not asking for your females. I'm asking you to believe on Jesus Christ, and what's so hard? You're a sinner. You are sold under Satan. And we ruin your business. We ruin your commerce. Read the book of Acts. Find out about the, the silversmiths. They ruin their business too. So according to Acts with the silversmith, I forget his name, we are doing the same thing the Bible says. And what happened in, in Ephesus with the shrines to Diana just happened this afternoon. They went to the authorities, shut them up, and we're still preaching the gospel. The love of God is that Christ died for your sins because you are a sinner. You can't do nothing but Jesus Christ to be saved. Death is coming. And the problem is you don't know when it's coming. Good morning, neighbor. Good to see you, Arnie. I see you walking dog early this morning. And... The Bible says you can't be almost persuaded. you got to be fully persuaded. <laughs> I mean, the greatest message would be how to get out of a flame. I mean, if you were in your house and your house was burning down, would you not want me to help you? Would you want me to let you burn and suffer? Oh, 
yeah, uh, fire department, yeah, his house was on fire, but I didn't want to offend him. I didn't want to scream. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. So I let him die. Yeah, I warn you about hell and the fire, and you get offended. And that's the love of God that we're telling you how not to go to hell. The Bible says, cry aloud. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And declare the sins of my people. And I don't name sins. I don't mock if you have a cigarette. I don't mock at your clothes. I group us all as sinners. There are no degree of sin. We are all sinners. One sin makes you a sinner. And that sinner that you are, that been born of a woman, that if you don't repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your state as being a sinner will drag you into hell. You've got to taste the Lord and see how wonderful He is. And God's not going to have you taste the Lord until you believe. There will be no signs or wonders or miracles for you to believe. You've got to taste and believe to get. And I stood in your shoes one day. I stood as a lost man, and I didn't taste the Lord till after I received Him. God is not going to show you no miraculous light. You're not going to see Jesus in your room. I'm not going to heal you of your infirmities. You're going to have to take God at His word and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Then you get the Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, then you get to be a child of God. Then you get to see what God has to offer, but you've got to believe first. And God has given you a free will. You've got to choose Jesus Christ. I can't do it for you. No one else can do. I apologize for this morning's mess, but still. It's biblical. Paul went up to a little girl and caused all kinds of, uh, of destruction because he, he wore out a devil. And it rose a commotion. Believe it or not, what you saw this morning are events that happened in the Bible. And it's, it's sorry to say that your unbelief proves to me the Bible is real because what you're doing is what the Bible says you're going to do and will do. And my only prayer is that at least one of you somewhere will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You don't realize what pains and anguish somebody like me has over your lost souls. Because I've tasted the Lord Jesus Christ. I know what the Bible says. And it 
if the Lord tarries, you won't hear preaching like this anymore. America will fall to sin. As in the days of Lot, three people were dragged and got saved. One turned back. I won't tell you what the two daughters did. As in the days of Noah, eight people out of an entire earth's population. Eight people. You know, they mocked at Noah when he preached. Just like you do. Bet you didn't know Noah preached. I bet that movie didn't say he was a preacher. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. Believe it or not, folks, this is way this is God's way of salvation. Sending preachers out to you. And believe it or not, you know what God says about preaching? You know what he says about a man getting up and screaming at you in Corinthians? He says it's foolishness. But he says the message is not foolish. And the message is you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. In January, you're going to have a guy screaming at the racetrack, a bunch of cars making left-hand turns. But you won't yell at him. Well, you shut up. We're trying to watch the race. Shut up up there. Don't tell us what to do. Don't tell us about the car. We're trying to... You won't do that to that guy. You won't walk up to that booth and tell that guy to shut up. You got an announcer over here at this ballpark. You won't tell him to shut up. But you tell God to shut up. Now, I told you last week, if you were here last week, God takes it personally, your attitude, His preachers. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What if the Bible's correct? I know some. You, you, well, it's not correct. It, but what if? What if? Think for a moment. What if the Bible's correct? I know it is. I have a surety by the word. What if your last breath would be today? I don't know what the date is. That's one thing that sure is death. Now I take that back. There are three sureties in this world when you're born. You're born to die and you will populate heaven or hell. Heaven by Jesus Christ, hell by whatever you want to ever do. And we stand here and tell you, the way out of hell is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. I figure such a message wouldn't get such backlash, but it does. I'm going to say something off the wall here, but... And you're going to have the nerve to celebrate Jesus' birthday and not believe on Him. What a bunch of hypocrites who died on a tree. The white, the purity, the green, the life, 
the red, the blood, the yellow, the gold of deity, and the gifts under the tree, you're going to bow down. I know some people are going to mark what I just said. <laughs> he just said, you're going to celebrate Christmas. And you're going to say, put Christ back in Christmas, but you will not believe it on Him as your Savior. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let fools reject His word. I wish He'd go. I wish He'd go away. So I could sell watermelons. So I could sell apples. Joy to the world, the Lord has come, and He's coming again. They know I could sing. <laughs>